share them with you. Tonight I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, I'm going to use a lot of different scriptures, but what I'm going to talk about tonight is why we vote and why as a Christian we vote. I think it's kind of timely, something you'll probably hear me do every, every few years because a lot of people have a lot of questions about it and they some don't see the point in doing it and then some get just so whole hog up in it you know and it's like that's what they really depend on there's a balance to it and I just want to kind of share that tonight and make sure I get it recorded uh, well it's going live so it will be out on YouTube if anybody wants or uh, in <coughs> Facebook if anybody wants to see it so I'm going to start off by praying father we thank you yep. thank you for all those that are here tonight and those i pray for those who couldn't be here and god will will come to you again at the end of the service but right now god we just want you to help us yep. bless us lord and and open our our hearts to receive what your spirit would say so we can rightly divide the word of truth we can break it down and see what it means to us now help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let me remind you uh, tonight, when I, and I always have to do this when I, when I teach, is I'll get going. I mean, I just get going and I'll just go. And if you have a question or a comment, you, you'll have to, you have to interject it in there because I'll just keep right on going. I've always done that. So I just want to remind you, this, this is what I'd like for you to have. If you have a question or comment, to do it. But if you're waiting on me to stop, you, you're going to have to say, whoa, because I'll just keep going. Tonight, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about, what, as, let's lead up to why I think it's important for us to vote. So in, let's start by looking at nations. What the role of nations, because that's where we, you know, as a, as a nation, as a people, we vote. A nation simply means a people or a group of people or, or several groups of people under one government, a king, a system of rule. That's what nations mean. But also keep in mind that God, we have nations, but God is sovereign. Amen? Yeah. The Bible says... In Psalm 47, verse 8, God reigns over the nations. So we have nations, but God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. And in Psalm 113, verse 4, the Lord is high above all nations. His glory is above the heaven. Psalm 10, verse 6, the Lord is king forever and ever the nations have perished out of his land. In other words, nations come and nations go, but God's still on the throne. So, you know, uh, 500 years ago, there was not a nation here. There were nations here. There were the Iroquois and the Cherokee and the Sioux and the, the, the Creek nations and the Chickasaw and all of those Seminoles and all of those different Nations. As a matter of fact, I was listening to something today that said that Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and James Madison all kind of based our Constitution on another Constitution of how to govern different states on the Iroquois nation. They had they looked at how they did, and they were impressed by it. And they had studied it so. There were nations here, there have been nations here for a long time, but our nation is relatively young on the earth. Now, the nations, God is sovereign, but God desires that a nation, which we've already defined, will acknowledge and serve him. Psalm 102, verse 15. So the nation, nations shall fear the name of the Lord. Psalm 72, 11. All nations shall serve him. All kings will bow down before him and all nations 
should serve, shall serve him. Psalm 86, verse 9. All nations whom you, who you have made shall come and worship before you. So God wants nations to acknowledge, right, and to serve him. Really, there's really no nation that has ever really done that. Even Israel uh, was always in rebellion toward God. I believe our nation is the closest nation to ever have done that. Really acknowledging God. We put God in our Constitution. We put God in our Declaration. We put God in our Bill of Rights. We put God in everything. Of course, now we've taken him out of everything. But our nation has done that. And so if, if, if nations will do that, God will bless that nation. And he will protect that nation. <clears throat> Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's Psalm 33, verse 12. The people who he has chosen as his heritage. Proverbs 14, 34. Third, four. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to, to any people. So if God will bless those nations that acknowledge him and that serve him on the other hand he will judge those nations that do not do that if they don't do that they enter into judgment automatically Jesus said in John 3 17 he said I didn't come to judge the world to condemn the world but the world condemns itself I didn't come to judge the world but the world judges itself in that it does not acknowledge me. Amen, everybody? Amen. So God, God doesn't want to judge a nation, but if you don't acknowledge and serve him, then you will just enter right into judgment. Okay? And the forms, the forms that we see, and Psalm 19, 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God what the psalmist said. Psalm 79 verse 6 said, Pour out your wrath on nations that do not know you and on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. How does a judgment, how does judgment happen? Well, floods, droughts. Me and Rip was talking about this, I believe. It was me and you, they talking about Mississippi River drying up. Yeah. It's been over a hundred years in a lot of, or more than anybody's ever seen it that low. Or tell folks something. Huh? Well, we, ought to get, we ought to wake up. Droughts, earthquake, famine, pestilence, and plagues. I mean, that, that generally happens. You, how did God judge Egypt? Ten ways? Can I interject something? Yes. I heard you never say when, um, Biden administration turned against Israel, which they have. Um, we started seeing this COVID shortage of food, droughts, whatever. This is part of God's judgment against America. He said, I bless those that bless me and I'll curse those that curse you. Right. Talking about Abraham and his descendants. And so we're seeing that because America is not standing behind Israel. And we call what is good evil, mm -hmm. and what is evil good. We promote licentiousness, pervert, <laughs> perversion. We promote that. We are trying to indoctrinate our children into that. And God, God killed, he killed all the inhabitants of Canaan. All of them. <laughs> he, he wiped Sodom and Gomorrah. But we're doing the same thing. Now, if, if, if your nation does not acknowledge and serve God, the, the impact of that nation will, will, will blow away like dust in the wind. And all it will be, it will be like Egypt. You see a few old pyramids and a sphinx and a temple and they go out and dig artifacts up. But that's about it. They have no 
preeminence in the world today. Rome does not. Rome doesn't. The British Empire, they said the sun never set on the British Empire. You don't hear about the British Empire anymore. The Soviet Union lasted 70 years. That's, that's, I mean, you think about that number. Now, you think about some things that they had in common. To go back to what you said. What did the Egyptians do to the Israelites? What did the what did the Rome what did Rome do, not only under the Caesars, but under the Catholic Church? What did they do to the Jews? What did the USSR do to them? The British were ruled over Palestine and had now they the Balfour Amendment and all that kind of stuff did have a big, big impact, but they were very hostile, many of them, toward a Jewish state, okay? China has had great nations and has not. Right now, they, they have a significant role in the world, but you'll see, there ain't gonna be nothing left in China. All that remains are, are nations that are or relics, and, and and if you want to see how they compare to the power of God, uh, how many of them was able to stop a virus? <laughs> how many of them was able to change a climate? I don't care what they say to you, how much tax they put on you to say they're going to fix the climate, they ain't going to do nothing <laughs> but get your money. That's all they're going to do. They can't stop drugs coming across. They can't stop them coming in the border. They can't stop them coming in a boat. They can't stop none of that. They can't stop violence in the street. They cannot do it. In fact, the more they try, the worse it gets. And they have proven that they cannot educate our children. They just can indoctrinate our children. Come on, somebody. They can't educate them. Since the Department of Education came into being in the mid-70s, if you look at our rank worldwide in our education and our ability, we have sunk way down since they, since they started the Department of Education. Why do we need something that made it worse? Come on, somebody. You need to look at the Department of Education. Look at Monroe County, for instance. When my children were going to Monroe County High School, it was a fabulous school. Scored high and whatever. And look what's happened. Politicians don't care about Monroe County High. No. Don't care. Isaiah said, Behold, the nation are as a drop in a bucket, and they are counted as a small dust on the scale. <laughs> so nations don't mean anything to God. So I'm just trying to put this into reference, though. <clears throat> the king is not saved by his great army. A war is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. That's Psalm 33, 16 and 17. So nations come and nations go. But those that will acknowledge God, there have been very few that even attempted. They have come and gone. What did Jesus say about how then do we respond to nation, to our to living in a nation? To being a part of a, of a government and of a kingship. Well, it, I think that the most simple thing that you could say that sums it all up is the way Jesus did. It was, you know, to us it's brilliant. He just said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give to God what belongs to God. What he, he said. So, let me just say it like this. You live in a nation, do what the nation requires of you. But give God what he requires of you. So that's how. How about the apostles? What the apostles say? Romans 13, we all know that. It says, pray, pay to all who is owed to them taxes to whom taxes is owed. That's what Paul said. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. 
So that's one reason why I caution Christians not to dishonor our government officials. Because the scripture is plain that we should honor them. Mm -hmm. We may not agree with them, but we should not dis disparage them and mock them and belittle them. We don't have to we don't have to go along with what they say, but that's important because Paul the apostle said honor to whom honor is old. Right? Do. First Peter says, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be an emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of the foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the emperor. That's what the apostles say about government. Okay? And we, we could go into all of that of how wicked and cruel Rome was. And I tell you, our government pales in comparison to what they did. Now, yeah. we might get there, but... Mm -hmm. So we should be involved in government as it is required and as it is expected. We should honor and, and be subject to the governing authorities unless it conflicts with God. Peter said this, we must obey God rather than man when he was talking to the Sanhedrin. So when it comes to God and the government, we <coughs> always go with God. Right? So what about us? Now, I'm talking about nations. So I, I said we're a little bit specific. And I'm going to get to why we should be vote, why we should vote. Okay? So what about us? This, this doesn't just apply to us, but to any government that is similar to ours. Our country is a constitutional republic. It is not a true democracy, okay? If you, because the majority does not always win. Right? right. You, you, if, it's based on each state as a republic. And that's why a lot of people want to do away with the Pledge of Allegiance and to the Republic for which it stands. They want to get rid of that because they would rather have a democracy. And if you have a democracy, the, demo the, the majority rules, which everybody said, well, that's the way it should be. Well, it, it, it should, what they're doing in California shouldn't affect what I do here. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said this. He said, democracy is self-government over all the people, by the people, and for all the people. Okay? That's what a true democracy is. And in our Constitution, it says, we the people. So we, we are a constitutional republic, but we're based on the people. It's the people choose, the people elect, and the people make the opinion. I, you know, I've shared this before, but uh, politicians do not do not control culture. It's cultures that put it's the culture that puts the politicians that we have in place. So what you see in Washington and in Montgomery is a reflection of what's going on out here in our own culture. We put them there, and we allow it to go. That's how we are. We're not governed by an emperor or a king. Rather, the people form a government from themselves. In the essence, people determine the policy and the directions of the nations. So if we blame the government for its actions, we are in a, in a sense, Miss Janice, pointing a finger at ourselves. We can't blame them. We put them there. Don't, don't, don't lose that fact. Because we as individuals make up a whole. So if the country goes in the right direction, it's because the people want right and they want good. But if the country, by the same token, goes in the wrong direction, 
it's because the people are going in the wrong direction or the people simply don't care. Mm -hmm. Which either one, I believe, is very sinful in its, in its very nature. Now, I'm not talking about our eternal salvation because we as, a, as, people, as individual will all be judged according to what we do, how we respond, how we act, right? I'm going to be judged because like this, uh, he's going to say, well done, because when he looks at me, he's going to see the blood, Ronnie. He, he's going to see the blood, and that's what he's going to see. And he say, you don't owe anything. If the price has been paid, glory to God, it's been bought. You're free. Come on in and inherit. That's what I'm going to receive. But I do live in a sinful nation. And as a person who lives in that nation, then that, as that nation suffers the, their judgment, their due judgment, I'm going to suffer with it as well. You see that? If I live in an area where there, there's no water, I'm not going to get any water. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to depend on God, and God can provide for me, but I'm going to have to do that because I live in this nation. If this nation goes in the wrong direction, I, 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 I'm, I'm moved along with it. It's like I'm on a ship. I don't have any control, you know, of what the captain's doing. But in this case, I kind of do because it put the captain in there. <laughs> so, then let's go to the individual. What about me? What, why do I vote? Well, as a nation, we're blessed and cursed by what the nation does. I've already said that. As an individual, we are and we will be held accountable for what we do. Okay, for what we do. Romans 14, verse 11 says, is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, look at this, each of us will give an account of himself to God. That's what he says. Can't get away from that. Saved and unsaved. We, we all going to give an account. My account, though, is going to be covered in the blood. Glory to God. I'm going to have the ring on. I'm going to have his name on my forehead. But I'm still going to have to give an account. Every individual does. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's what the apostle said. We must all so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in his body, whether good or evil. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Not only does your vote count, but you will be held accountable for the decision you make how you vote. Keep this scripture in mind. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, that's us, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are judged to angels? How much more then matters pertaining to this life. So what he's saying, what's important, these things are important. What what goes on in this life. So let me wrap it up. There are a lot of issues out there. There are a lot of candidates who run that don't live like I think they ought to live. And I look at that and we all should. Because character counts. Come on, somebody. Say mm -hmm. character counts. However, over these past 43 years, Miss Gail, I have determined that I get lied to a lot. <laughs> <laughs> By candidates. Yes, sir. They'll, they'll pose a picture with them and a dog and a gun and 
little children all around them and walking out to church, you know, and all of this and say, I'm going to be for you. They ain't nothing like me. That was all a photo of. I've determined that I can't really trust none of them, okay? I can't trust them to do what they say they will do. But I look, but I must. This is, this is me, okay? I must look at how they vote on issues that I believe are important to God. There's nothing else, abortion. This was years ago. People asked me, how, how do you do? I said, well, I don't know about you, but I prayed. And I did. I did. I prayed, prayed. This way back in the 80s, I prayed. And I said, God, how, how do I need to vote when the candidate that supports that? And he just, I mean, very plainly in my spirit spoke to me and said, I'm going to hold you accountable if you vote for somebody that knowingly and willingly says they're for killing a baby. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. That's what he told me. I can't tell you what he told you, mm -hmm. but I can tell you what he told me, and that's the way I vote. I'm not going to stand before him and say, well, you know, they, they was good on the economy. So I just, you know, I felt like I'd get more money in my pocketbook. I ain't going to do that. Now, you can do whatever you want to, but I can't. I cannot vote for any person that defines marriage of anything other than between a man and a woman. Not a man and two women. Not four women and one man. Not a man and a man. Not a, not a woman and a woman. Not a man thinking he's a man and a woman. and a, a, I can't vote for them because that goes all the way back to God's creation and I'm telling God he made a mistake see that's what I'm doing I'm saying well you know I know you know Sherry's got everything a man ought to have but Lord you messed up he's really a woman on the inside that's silly isn't it that ain't gonna hold up when you stand for God and I believe because we live in a nation we have this thing because a free vote. We will be held accountable for that. Yeah. Now, how does that affect my eternal salvation? I'm going to just be tell. I'm going to tell you this. I really don't know. I can't tell you one way or the other. But I sure wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it. Then he'd say, well, you did all these good works, but look at this abomination you supported right here. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But I'm saying, but I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not going to risk that. So how do you, so this is what I'm telling you. How, how did I come to that? Well, I didn't vote my conscience. Everybody says vote your conscience. No, your conscience is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Whatever your opinion is, it don't matter. We all got them. They're like noses. They're all different, and they all smell. Come on. Yep. Don't vote how you have reason in the intellect of your mind. You can't do that. I can't do that. So what do I do? I'm, I'm spirit-filled. I'm a child of God. I pray and I ask God how to vote. I vote what the Bible says, and I'm left. I leave it all in the hands of God. If I know someone is standing up against what the Bible says, I don't have to pray about that. I scratch them right off. If I don't know if they're telling me the truth or not, I this is me. I pray, and I ask the Lord. And the, I'm going to tell you, some of y'all ain't going to like this. There have been times when I felt like I ain't vote for every one of them. <laughs> now, some of y'all say, well, if you don't vote, then you, it's voting for the other person. Well, I, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. Somebody says, well, you got to go with the lesser of two evils. Well, it's still evil. <laughs> yes. That's me. And I won't argue with anybody about that. 
you know, and people would say, well, now if you didn't vote, you know what you've done. I'm like, no, I'm not. No. See, I pray. I've sought God. I've got the answer from God. That's what I'm telling you to do, and I'm telling you to do. You better seek God. I don't care what your friend tells you. I don't care what they tell you on the TV, because you better not pay attention to that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I don't tell you what, don't go by what your gut says. Well, I just got a gut feeling. Don't, your gut, that could be a bad piece of sausage or something. Yes. It could be, yes. When the older you get, the more it could be a lot of different things. Don't go by that. You better get on, you better get on your face before God. You better ask the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you, ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knocking the door will be open. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask and God will give it to him liberally. Amen? You better ask the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, for me, for a time or two, it has been, I was hoping that one. I feel like the Holy Ghost said, well, I'm going to hope even. <laughs> My goodness. Lesser of two evils. That don't even make sense. So you're telling me to do something evil then. I mean, I hear preachers say that. I, I was listening to some teaching the other day, and I heard preachers say that. I said, well, you got you to gotta choose something. I said, no, no. -uh. I choose this day to serve the Lord. That's my only choice. If this one's bad and that one's bad, which one am I going to take? Right? If it's, a, if it's an issue that defies God, they ain't getting my vote. Now, and if they're just such a terrible person that I can't swallow it, I just ain't going to vote for it. But that's just me, okay? Now, I want to 